Hi, everyone. I'm very excited you could join us today. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy, both physically as well as mentally. Um, but thank you very much for joining Cred Education's presentation. Today, I am going to talk about motivating children through what we call extrinsic motivation. That's in contrast to intrinsic motivation, which is the internal motivators that we typically have. And I hope I can shed some light on this topic because it is a pretty hotly debated topic, should you reward kids or not? So I hope I can uh, provide some insight. Um, before we begin, I just wanted to give you a quick introduction into myself. My name is Nidhi Patel, and I am the founder of Cred Education Incorporated. We are based off of the correct usage of rewards to help motivate and help kids achieve their skills. My background though, for the past 15 years, I've worked in management consulting and corporate strategy in companies like Samsung. I led education strategy at Apple uh, and also HP, Yahoo, and Snap. But I wanted something more. So I became an educator as well as a consultant for educators in public school districts around the country. One of the key issues that I found most educators, be they parents or seasoned teachers face, is motivating their kids. And that is what I decided I wanted to go deep into to truly, truly understand. So motivation, we all know, is important. You're gonna be hearing a lot about financial literacy during this conference, and you should know that it's important to teach the tools of financial literacy and financial independence, but if kids aren't motivated to employ those techniques, it won't matter. Even if they technically know how to do something, they won't actually do it and they won't be successful. And so motivation, we found, is a problem. But not in general. If you've ever seen a 12-year-old play Fortnite for eight hours, you know that motivation is not a problem for Fortnite. In fact, kids are super able to be motivated for some things. It just seems that teens and children aren't motivated to do things that we think might be the right and productive choice for them. And that's where I dug into the science to kind of look at ways in which parents, teachers, and other trusted adults can really provide that motivation. And here's what I found. I found that child and adolescent motivation consists of two buckets right here, attention and autonomy. You need to get positive attention for the things that you do in order for you to be motivated to do it. Makes sense. You also need autonomy to make your own choices. If you get attention for doing something, but somebody kind of did it all for you, that doesn't give you the sense of motivation to try to do it yourself and to try to do it again. And that's why both of these buckets need to be filled up. And if you don't fill them up for your kids, the children will fill them up themselves. They will go find places where they get positive attention for what they want to do, and they will take autonomy when it might be least acceptable. We sometimes see this as defiance in the home, which is a form of autonomy. But you see toddlers do this because toddlers also need autonomy. You tell them what to do all day at dinner time, all of a sudden, they're not going to eat dinner because that's one thing they control. They control what goes in their mouth. And so if you have not given them the ability to have autonomy throughout the day, they will put up their hands and say, well, I'm taking it now. I'm taking it right now. And so what credit education, what we realized is we needed to create a platform that allows for both positive attention and autonomy directed towards helping kids build the right skills. If we don't do that, there is a major consequence. The NIMH did a study of kids between the ages of around eight to 13, and they found that one in two children will develop a mood, behavioral, or substance abuse addiction by the age of 18. This goes across race, class, location, any factor, gender, all of these factors. And the reason for this is that the way kids are being motivated right now is towards places that are not meant to create productive, happy adults. They're more motivated to perform a dance on TikTok because of the positive attention 
because of the autonomy than they are to work on their science or experiment on things. We're losing a battle right now to develop productive, productive, happy adults. And that's where we need the tools and the resources to direct children's motivation in the right direction. And that is what I'm here to talk about. I developed Cred Education, which is a new platform that allows parents and teachers to motivate positive skill building in their kids based on the research around creating meaningful attention and valued autonomy for kids. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how it works and then I'm gonna go into the science and research behind why it works. And all of our CRED education platforms are based off of doing rewards right. Remember I talked about extrinsic motivation? Extrinsic motivation is key. You can't just give rewards for anything, but if you give rewards for the right reasons, it can be the most impactful tool in your toolkit to help kids realize their own potential. And that is what I am here to talk about. So let's start with our platform, CRED Rewards. How it works is kids get their own profile. Here's Jefferson's profile right here. And kids get points either at home in that green bucket or at school from their teachers, okay? Kids have to pick skills that they're going to work on for a certain period of time, and they have to track if they completed their skills every single day. Now, the key here is skills are not achievements. It's not, I got an A in math. The skills are, I'm gonna work on math for 30 minutes every day. That's important if your child is struggling with math. You give them a reward for putting forth effort in math, you let them track it every single day, and if your child does this successfully, they put forth a great effort every single day for the time period, they get an allowance that's paid by you but comes into their account as these wonderful points, okay? And I'll tell you a little bit what they can do with their points because that's, that's the other part about extrinsic motivation. Rewards matter. But here what we're doing is we're directly tying effort with rewards and that is also research-based. On the adult side, the adults like parents and teachers can see the progress that the child is having on their own skills they can even make changes if they see that maybe a child said that they made the bed, but as you go into the room, you see that they didn't make the bed. Uh, you can change uh, the skill performance and you set the allowance. So here the allowance is 3000 credits and that's worth $30. We don't take a fee, we don't take a cut. The kids get that full amount into their cred balance. So if they achieved 100% of their skills, they get 100% of their allowance. Now, what do they do with this allowance? In today's world, what they do with their allowance is they go buy junk food and soda at the local store. And that's what we didn't want uh, children to do anymore. What we wanted children to do is we wanted them to have their own curated store where they can get age appropriate, very cool, very fun things that your child can learn new things from. So we created their very first e-commerce store. It's filled with wonderful things like books, also experiments, science things, also fun, cool gadgets like headphones, like soccer balls, yoga mats, things that can help them uh, build productive lives. We also curate this so that there's one of a kind items that are just perfect for your child's age range and interests. Now your child can learn that I can buy something small now with my points, or I could save up and I can buy something later. We're also introducing new features like having kids invest their points and watch their points grow over time based on certain factors, as well as donate to good causes. Now let's talk about, so I talked about rewards, intrinsic versus extrinsic motivation. We want our kids all to have intrinsic motivation to do things like make their bed or work on math or do their homework. But the reality is, that intrinsic motivation actually has a certain number of prerequisites in order to exist. That's where, if those prerequisites aren't there, extrinsic motivation, like rewards, are actually very useful. So let's start with intrinsic motivation, because obviously that's what we'd like our kids to have to do all of these things. There are four prerequisites for intrinsic motivation. 
I have to get what I have to do. I know exactly what I'm supposed to achieve. I know how to do it. Or maybe I know someone else that knows how to do it and I can figure it out from them. Three, I have the resources and time to do it. And four, I get value, not from my parents, but because I value accomplishing it for some reason. If those four prerequisites aren't there, intrinsic motivation is not there. And if we take the example of Fortnite, Fortnite, you, my kid knows exactly what he's supposed to do and accomplish at every level. He knows how to do it. And if he doesn't, he's talking to his friends to figure out how to do it. So he has a pathway and a process that's laid out for him. He also has the resources to do it. He also gets value. He gets the esteem from accomplishing something first with his friends who are all playing the same games. He gets value out of playing it. I don't need to reward him for playing Fortnite. He, the playing the game and achieving his goals are, re are rewards in and of themselves. But let's take another example. What about math homework? My son's not very good at math. So how can he get better at math? What if I say, son, I would like you to work for an hour every day just on some of these math problems. Just try as much as you can. Well, here's the problem. He gets what he has to do. He has to finish the worksheet that I gave him. But if he doesn't really know how to do math, he doesn't know how to do it, and he's gonna have a hard time figuring it out. He might have the resources to do it. I might give him a textbook or a calculator to help him check his answers. But at the end of the day, he's gonna do it, and he doesn't get any value out of accomplishing it because maybe I'm happy, but he doesn't see the value in it. He's 12, he's in sixth grade. It doesn't matter for him right now. And so when all of these things, when you don't have all four prerequisites, you're actually not able to achieve intrinsic motivation. You need to rely on extrinsic motivation. But you still have to do extrinsic motivation properly because you don't want it to be like bribing students. And so this is how you can do it right. The right way to do extrinsic motivation has four, another four, I don't do threes, I do fours, uh, four ways to do extrinsic motivation right. The first is you need to encourage effort for things that are hard or undesirable, okay? So this is like my son working on math. I don't want him to get an A in math, so I'm not gonna reward getting an A in math, but what I do want him to do is I want him to spend 30 minutes every day trying to get better at math. So I'm encouraging effort for things that are hard, okay? The second way to do rewards right is you wanna use it to build habits. There have been lots of studies for uh, adults who want to exercise more, where if they use an extrinsic motivator, like paying themselves, for example, they will build the habit of exercise more than people who do not use an extrinsic motivator. The next right way to use extrinsic motivation is to break habits. Uh, there have been numerous hospitals that create programs that pay pregnant women to stop smoking because in order to break a habit that's so entrenched, having an extrinsic motivator that you also want, like money or something else, can help you move out of the undesired behavior. The last, and in my opinion, the most important aspect of extrinsic motivation is that the rewards must matter to that person and they have to be realistically achievable. I'll go back to the example when I said, hey son, get an A in math. He may not be able to get an A in math this year. He may be so far behind that he needs to work just in order to get a B. Maybe he can get an A next year, but that's not realistically achievable this year. So I can't put my reward based on that. I have to make it based on effort, work really hard, because then we'll see the B this year and we might see the A next year. The rewards also matter. They can't just be a bunch of garbage. Now, let's, let me quickly talk about the study that all the naysayers used around why extrinsic motivation is bad. In 1971, Stanford professor Edward Desi led an experiment with 24 Stanford University students, where he gave them a puzzle, this puzzle here uh, called SOMA, and he gave them 13 minutes to finish it. Day one, everybody worked for 13 minutes and he saw how long they uh, put forth effort. Day two, he paid half the kids if they finished it and then he didn't pay the other half. And on the third day, it was exactly the same. Nobody got paid, they just worked on it. And what he found was that when the kids got paid on the second day, 
they worked harder that day. But then on the third day, because they lost their money, they didn't work as hard. So he concluded that extrinsic motivation can actually lower intrinsic motivation. Well, there's a lot of problems with this study. The number one problem is that the results from day two and day three were not statistically significant. The other main problem is that he picked a game that kids like. It's like giving kids money to play Fortnite. Uh, Virginia Schiller of Yale University said it best when she said, who in the world would think about giving rewards if a child were interested in an activity? You only think of offering incentives if a child is struggling or is resistant. And that's the key. Rewards are given to improve a certain behavior and they're needed only for a few weeks. Then once that behavior is achieved, you move on to the next goal. And that is how we built CRED rewards. We've built it so that the skills are time bound. Once that child achieves the skills, they are moving on to the next skill. And that way, your allowance is going towards constantly building positive skills in academics and behavior at home, with sports, with music, whatever you want, you can help your child build those skills. And that's what we care deeply about. We are in market right now. You can download us on the App Store or Google Play. But we're also launching a new version in June, and we need family beta testers. This is a great way to get your whole family involved in agile product management. Uh, there's a whole process. It's pretty simple. It only requires about 20 minutes of your time every week with your family. Um, but it's a great process. If you'd like to join, please email me at nidhi at credapp.com. And again, if you don't want to beta test, but you just want to get our product, Go for it, it's free for you. Uh, download it on the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, or you can use it online on a computer at credapp.com. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time to learn about extrinsic motivation and how to use it properly. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Needy, I am signing off. Please feel free to email me at needy at credapp.com, or this is a phone number that you can call to get access to our beta program. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye-bye.